Hey, it's Mr. Wynn. Let's win some chemistry. We're going to do the specific heat of metals lab today. So let's have our notes out and ready and let's get right into it. Right above me are the six metal samples that we are going to identify. They are labeled A, B, C, D, E, and F. I'm going to do sample D and we are going to solve for its specific heat. And you're going to see that D uh, looks like copper because it is. Okay, so we could tell by what it is based on how it looks, but Today we're going to examine specific heat as a property, so that's what we're going to do instead. We need the masses for each sample. I've given you all six of the masses, and you can see there, unknown D has a mass of 500 grams, which we're going to use for the calculation later on. The metal can that you see is what we call a calorimeter. It's a container that is used to measure and absorb the temperature change of water. And you can see there the initial temperature of the water in the calorimeter before we start adding the hot metal is 21.5 degrees Celsius. So after the metal has been heating up for quite some time in the hot bath, you're going to transfer this over to the calorimeter, then you close the lid. Then you need to come back and you measure the temperature of the water in the hot bath because that represents the initial temperature of the metal. Now that you've allowed enough time for the metal to transfer its heat to the water inside the calorimeter, you get a reading of the final temperature of the water, which is 30.3. This is easy if you just keep track of two things and stay organized. So on the left is anything, any data that's related to the metal. So you can see there, all the labels have like a tiny M, like a baby M next to it, it just represents metal. So like Q metal, that's the heat absorbed by the metal. M, which is mass of the metal. C, specific heat of the metal. And T final and T initial of the metal. So that's all on the left. Now, on the right hand side is any data that is pertinent to the water. So again, it's the same list of variables because the equation we're going to use is Q equals MC delta T. It was covered in a different video that I did. So I filled in all the stuff that was given that we measured in the lab. Uh, you guys saw the procedures just a second ago. So the mass of my metal was 500. Uh, T final of the metal you're gonna see is also 30.3 I'm gonna fill that in in just a minute just to show you uh, later on and T initial of the metal is 58.5 degrees Celsius because that was the temperature of the water uh, the moment that we took the metal out and we transferred it over so you can see in the diagram we take the metal out and then we put it inside that calorimeter and you can see with like the little like red arrows and stuff that I, I, I drew inside uh, that calorimeter, those little red arrows just represent the heat that's given off by that by the the metal cube. So now, I know what the mass of the water was. It was 150. Okay, it's also in the data table. So for all trials, the mass of the water is going to be 150. The specific heat of water is 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius. And finally, your uh, T final is 30.3 degrees Celsius and your T initial is 21.5 which you guys saw in that clip. Now there's one assumption you can make. Okay so T final the metal on the left there is also 30.3. So it's kind of like this the metal is initially at 58.5 degrees Celsius and the water is here at 21.5 so when you put the metal uh, inside the calorimeter the water heats up to 30.3 and the metal also equalizes and they both meet at 30.3 for their final temperature. I plug in 30.3 degrees Celsius for T final of the metal. Then I come back to the right hand side. I'm going to plug in my equation Q equals MC delta T and we're going to plug in 150 grams for the mass, 4.18 joules per grams degrees Celsius for the specific heat of water and Delta T is T final minus T initial, so 30.3 minus 21.5. So here it's plug and chug, just make sure you cancel out your units. I'm left with joules, which is a unit of heat represented by Q. I get 5,517.6 joules, and I give that a plus sign because that's the heat that's absorbed by the water. And now I come back to the left hand side of the equation. It's the same number, with, but with a negative sign because that's the heat that's released by the metal. And I have enough information now to solve for C of the metal, which is the specific heat. So I rearrange my equation 
and I plug in Q over M delta T. So I just plug in all the numbers that I had before. Negative 5,517.6 joules for the heat released by the metal. I plug in my mass for the metal, which is 500 grams. And I also plug in delta T. This will be a little strange. It's going to be 30.3 minus 58.5. It's supposed to be like that. You'll get a negative sign, so a double negative cancels out. And we are going to get 0.39 joules per grams degrees Celsius. So that represents the specific heat of the metal, the unknown metal for sample D. So this was a calculation that I also typed in on your lab handout. And you can just rewind this so that you understand how to do these calculations for the other five samples. We look for the closest match, 0.39 is actually copper. Okay, it could also be zinc, but sample D just looks like copper, so we can infer that. So let's have a look at what's due for the lab. So like I mentioned before, I did calculation D for you, and this is typed in on the lab. So you can see here, we need to fill in boxes A, B, C, E, and F. So the other five samples, so you can Either type in your work or uh, write it out by hand directly onto this document and then just send the photos back. Okay, so every problem should be done like this. Okay, so you can see here you need to calculate for the heat that's absorbed by the water first on the right hand side. So I highlighted that in yellow. And then you send it back over to the left hand side. And then you can now solve for specific heat of the metal in green. So it's like a two part equation that you need to set up. So all my work is down here again. Okay, I just ended up using Q equals MC delta T twice. Now, the numbers that you need are all up here. So everything's given. And you can see how I did sample D. Okay, and then I found out that the specific heat was 0.39 for uh, the experimental value. And once I find out what the experimental value is, I then scroll down to this page and I look for the closest match. So I found out that sample D is copper, but I mentioned that it could have been zinc also, but based on the pictures, I inferred that copper was sample D because it has that like brownish color. So I know that it's copper. So uh, try your best on this. Okay, do the five calculations, fill in the data table. So I know what the specific heats are and you just want to uh, answer these 10 conceptual questions right here. All right, cool. Thanks for listening and tune in next time on wind chemistry.